Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I will share with you three main things. What is book cloth? Seven different ways of making DIY book cloth. How to use and apply book cloth, or in other words, projects in action. All right, let's get started. Book cloth is used in book binding to cover the exterior of hardcover books and to provide protection and durability to the overall structure of the book. So this black thing you can see here, that's book cloth. Here is another example of how book cloth has been used here just along the spine and then it's covered with this other plasticky material. But that in there, it's like a book cloth tape. Obviously the types and uses of book cloth has evolved over time. But you can see here another example on this solo book. In the junk journal world, the main uses for book cloth is to cover spines of, ex of existing books. So for example, you can see this book here, absolutely beautiful. I can turn this into a junk journal. However, I may not want this visible on the spine. I want to cover that spine. And one of the ways of going about that is using book cloth. You can also use book cloth to cover the whole book. Uh, whole existing book like I did over here. So we will go through the process of doing this later on. But basically this was a book that not only had the title and the author's name on the spine, but it had something on the front and it had something on the back as well. And I wanted to uh, cover the whole thing. So I used my DIY book cloth. So you may be thinking you can just do that with any old fabric. You can just cover your book with fabric. You don't need to have book cloth. And in all honesty, all these years on my channels, that's pretty much what I did. I just used fabric straight on top of a book. However, the main feature of using actual book cloth, see the difference here? This is book cloth and this is just the fabric on its own. Exactly the same fabric, only this one's been turned into book cloth. The main feature of using the book cloth instead of the, just the fabric is that it prevents air bubbles, wrinkling, and glue seeping through. That's one of my pet peeves, especially when you're using a lighter colored fabric, like this, for example, or something like this. You can see this here, it's not only light, but it's also quite thin. So if you get any glue seeping through, it's going to be quite visible on your project and it'll probably ruin the whole thing if there's a lot of glue seeping through. So by using book cloth, we are preventing air bubbles, glue seeping through and wrinkling. I don't know if you can see how beautifully flat and flush this fabric is, or book cloth, I should say. When I open this up, there's no air pockets, which can sometimes happen if your fabric starts peeling off of the book or off of the cover. In this case, that fabric is adhered to paper and it's not, it's just perfection. This is also a hardcover book that had an author's name and title on the spine and I wanted it completely covered. So I used my book cloth. I could have just left it at the book cloth, but I wanted to add this piece here. I did the same on the back and I'm going to further, you know, this isn't done, but you can see the book cloth in action. Also working with actual book cloth rather than just the fabric makes it easier to be manipulated folded when you're doing things like this when you're doing things like this it's not moving around you have that stiffness so easy to be manipulated folded i mean that would also be a cute journal page too and cut when you've made a book cloth it thickens that fabric it stiffens it up and then if you want to go and fussy cut some beautiful images if you have beautiful fabric like this one here then it's easier to fussy cut out the images. There are other ways, but that is also a feature of making DIY book cloth. So how do you make book cloth? How do you turn fabric like this into book cloth? I have tried seven different methods of making book cloth and all you need in most cases is your fabric, paper and something to hold them together or something in between. So that's pretty much what book cloth is. It's fabric that has a backing on it to make it nice and firm and reinforced. All right, method number one is using Glad Wrap. 
or cling wrap or cling foil. I'm not sure of all of the names that I used for this product, but this is what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure you know what this is. So because I tried seven methods of making book cloth, I won't be able to demonstrate each one, but I will be able to talk you through it. So what we, as I said before, what we need is some type of a paper, fabric, and something to hold them together. With your paper, it's probably best to go really thin. This is some type of Japanese paper. It's quite thin. You can even use tissue paper like this. You can pretty much use anything up to 80 GSM, which is a standard printer paper size or paper weight, I should say. And then what I did is I got my fabric. I laid my fabric down wrong side up. So this is my correct side. I laid my fabric down wrong side up, put the cling wrap over the top smaller slightly smaller than the, oh actually I didn't uh, it's not slightly smaller than the fabric you can see the cling wrap sort of sticking out here it doesn't matter how you do it the main thing that you have to keep in mind is not to get your iron directly onto the cling wrap because it's going to get stuck to your iron next thing you do is you put your piece of paper down and make sure you're covering all of the glad wrap and then you go ahead and you iron and you just you know medium heat iron and you just keep going over it a, a few times i suppose and what happens is the glad wrap melts in between the fabric and the paper and holds it together holds them together it acts like a glow so let's see if you can see you can see that it's not permanent so if i wanted to peel this off i could probably quite easily but they are stuck together and i can go ahead and wrap a whole book and all of these edges would be wrapped inside, if that makes sense. We will do this later on in the tutorial, so it will make sense. But those edges that could be peeled off very easily are all covered in the end. You can see how that fabric wraps around on the inside of the book and then it's held down. So all of the edges are nicely sealed. Nothing can be peeled off. Method number two is double-sided tape. All right, keep an open mind here. If there's any professional book binders there, they would be cringing at the idea of using double-sided tape. This book cloth here is double-sided tape and it just makes the whole process so much easier. I will admit it's probably not archival quality. I'm not sure what will happen over time. In 10 years time, does the glue on the double-sided tape, will it seep through the fabric? I'm not sure. So that is something to keep in mind. I'm placing this here because it's an option and it's an easy one at that. And I don't know, oftentimes things that, that can be done quickly and easily may not be ideal, but it worked like a charm. For this project here, it was perfect. So when you want to do a quick spine covering, not the whole book, but only the spine, you have your piece of fabric and then you have some double-sided tape. Okay, this here is some heavy-duty double-sided tape. I actually found this in an op shop. I wouldn't even know where you can buy. You probably can find it on Amazon or probably everywhere. In any case, it's beautifully wide. And look at that. It's perfect. And then you can guess what I've done here. So I just applied it onto fabric. And if you didn't have a, a wide double-sided tape, of course, you can use strips like this. I mean, I love this idea in general, not just as a book cloth and in, in, in covering the spines, but you can also use it kind of like a little washi tape, fabric washi tape. I love that. Look, I love that idea. However, having said that, uh, generally, I'm not a fan of double-sided tape in projects, especially on paper, because over time, the glue seeps through. I've shown this book many times. You've probably seen it before. This is a, this was gifted to me. And you can see, I think this was about maybe five years ago. I, I don't even know, five, six years ago. And you can see what's happened with double-sided tape. So can you guarantee that that's not going to happen on your paper? I think it will be less obvious if it does happen on fabric. But there's numerous factors that come in, into consideration here, I suppose. What kind of double tape was, it, was used? There's probably double-sided tapes that will not do this. But in any case, it's something to keep in mind. And also another thing to keep in mind with double-sided tape, and another thing that's happened to me as well, is that over time it can lose its stickiness. So in a project like this, this is going to be covered here with another piece of cardstock so that's going to be held down in place with cardstock 
that it's also going to be sewn through with a signature another thing to hold it in place and this is also going to be covered with whatever material I choose here it's going to be glued down obviously that's too small but it's going to be held down in any case only issue is the glue seeping through which is what we're trying to avoid by using cloth book cloth I mean so I don't know it's an option and it's totally up to you how comfortable you are with using this sort of thing. I suppose there's pros and cons to all of the methods I've tried. So method number three is freezer paper. Freezer paper is very popular option in the junk journal community. Basically, it's just a sheet that has this plastic coating on one side and is normal paper on the other side. And this one is specifically, obviously they found another market for using freezer paper sheets. It's specifically great for crafts, it says. And basically all you do is you iron your fabric to shiny side of the freezer paper and then you can go ahead and print you can put it through your print printer which I haven't done but you can so the process works like this you take your fabric you find the wrong side that's the wrong side you pop it down obviously not on your other craft projects you put it down onto your ironing board then you take your freezer paper sheet you get the shiny side you pop the shiny side down over the top of the fabric it's probably a, go a good idea to have your fabric larger than the freezer sheet and then you follow instructions if there are any if there are no instructions like on my packet i just you, you just iron over the top medium heat and you just keep going and you keep checking if it's kind of sealed together go over it a couple of times and you're done i also used a roll i think i don't remember where i got this but this is an unbleached kind of freezer paper and you can see that plastic side and then the paper side on the back and i used this also to iron not only fabric but napkins onto this too here is an example of what i did you can see that freezer paper and i ironed a napkin on top just one ply just the top sheet and then I sewn around and the reason why I sewn around and also that's one of the cons of using the freezer paper is because yes it's going to keep your fabric stuck on there for the duration of your project making holding it in place while you need it however on its own very very easy it also depends on your fabric and on your freezer paper but it can be peeled off quite easy especially this one here very very easy so i'm not a huge fan of this method so this is probably something that i will use when covering a full book let's say something like this cut it in half and then all of those edges with that freezer paper is easily peeled off all of those edges are going to be turned in and covered anyway so i won't have any issues with things peeling off if I wanted to use this in any other way, let's say I want to have a fabric page in my junk journal, which I think is a really cool idea, I think it will look awesome in a journal, I would just sew around, as simple as that. Method number four is PVA glue. The inexpensive kind, this kid's PVA, it's just white glue, just school glue. There's many different brands of PVA glue. So as I said, you need paper, you need fabric and something to hold them together. So I just glued them together. I took a piece of paper, covered it in glue, placed my fabric on top, smoothed it out and waited for it to dry. And this is what I got. It's not my favorite method because what happens is I actually had to iron it again. What happens is there's a whole lot of warping, warping of the paper. So as the paper expands and then when it dries, it kind of shrinks back or wavy and stuff. And then the same thing happens with the fabric. It was all over the place. When it was dried, I ironed it down. You know what? Way too much work. But might be something that you want to give a go if you don't have any of the things I've already mentioned, such as double-sided tape and freezer paper and all the things we're going to talk about as we go along. So what I ended up doing for this one here, you can see I used two different types of paper. This is just a notebook paper from my kids' school. And then this is that thin Japanese paper. It's almost like tissue paper. And I love the sound of this and I love the look of this. So instead of using it as a book cloth is intended to be used, I made it into an envelope. And it's actually 
looking really beautiful, nice and flat, no air bubbles. But when it was first dried, I thought, what a disaster, because it was just all over the place, completely wrinkled up. But when I ironed it down, it just ended up looking quite beautiful. So I love the idea of this. I love the sound, love everything about it. But as I said, there's quite a lot of work involved with doing the PVA glue, putting the fabric down, waiting for it to dry, usually overnight, and then having to iron it again. So probably not something I will be doing again, but it is an option. So there you have it. And it holds a lot better than the freezer sheets. So I can just barely lift here on the edges. Really, it's really glued down. Like. So it, it's actually a much better hold than the freezer paper. Method number five is using a product called Heat and Bond Iron-On Adhesive. So what we're trying to do is glue fabric to paper and here is the perfect glue. So how this works is, by the way, I don't think this product, I don't think it's available everywhere. It might go by other names. So maybe just uh, iron, I was going to say iron. Maybe just Google iron on adhesive product and then see what comes up. All right, so this is it. This is a sheet of heat and bond. And the way that it works, you can see this here, that's glue. So you take your fabric wrong side up, you put the glue or your product, your heat and bond on top of the fabric. So a good idea also is to have your fabric larger than your piece of heat and bond. You pop it down and you iron it on. You follow instructions. Medium heat, you just kind of, you know, be sensible, sensible about it. Once that's ironed on, you peel the paper off. When you peel the paper off, you will see the glue stays on the fabric. Obviously it's not on there now because I didn't iron it on, but the glue transfers onto the fabric. And then you take your chosen form of paper backing that you want on there. You put that on, on top of that glue and then you iron again. It sounds a bit complicated, but really it isn't. So this here that you can see, the back of this fabric, this is tissue paper. It doesn't look like it, it seems quite quite a bit thicker, but that's just tissue paper that I use there. And on this one here, I use that thin Japanese paper and he, I wrote myself a note so that I know. And let's see, does it peel off easy? It can peel off, but it requires a lot more force than the freezer paper, so I really don't want to peel it off. But I don't know if you can see that glow there, that's from the heat and bond. I'm not sure how, is it an expensive product? I think, I'm not sure. But apparently you can do all sorts of fun crafts with it. And it is the strongest no-sew bond. And anyway, there's probably all different types and kinds. This one's ultra hold. So there we have it. Maybe you can Google fusible web product or something. So in any case, that's also an option. Method number six that I tried is using fusible interfacing. And basically it's just a really, really thin material like this. You've probably seen it before. And you have one side that looks like this almost like tissue paper. And then on the other side, you can see those little sparkles that's actually glue. You just iron this onto your fabric. Very easy. Adds stability to fabrics. So it's used for collars, cuffs, waistbands, necklines and pockets, and book cloth. I'm very confident of using this as book cloth because it has this protective layer now. It's going to minimize air bubbles and glue seeping through, which is the main thing for me in any case. And it's just easier. You can see how there's not that much thickness to the fabric. So it's easier when working with books like this and I want to get that fabric into that groove. Obviously, it's easier to do that with thinner fabric rather than a thicker fabric and just to show this as an example this is heat and bond that i used and this is tissue paper as the backing very thin tissue paper and it seems this is a lot more firmer than this so i feel like this will be easier to work with in those little grooves and then also in here when i come in and i want to get that fabric really to sit in those grooves as well much easier to work with with thinner you know, fabric like this. So different things for different purposes, users, and like I said before, they all have 
pros and cons and you can see on this fabric here I absolutely love these beautiful sunflowers and when I have the backing so much easier to cut it out fussy cut out it does take a bit of time to fussy cut as you know but now I can go ahead and glue this down or sew it down or I don't know it just you know much easier to be sewn on as well I think there's not going to be as much movement as there would be if I was using just the fabric and the last method I tried is fabric glue so this this is a really cheap fabric glue from Kmart it's a little bit different to the PVA glue because PVA glue is a general all-purpose glue for papers and crafts and fabrics and, and all sorts. And this is specifically fabric glue, which I'm not sure what the difference is. And it doesn't actually list any ingredients, so I'm really, I really don't know. I wanted to try it and see if it's going to make a difference. And it actually did make a difference. So I took a piece of paper just like this and I painted the glue over the top, completely covered the whole paper with the glue, which a little bit time consuming, but what can you do? Then I took my piece of fabric, obviously the wrong side is going to go down on top of the glue, smoothed it down and waited for it to dry. It wasn't as warped as when I was using PVA glue. Maybe that's because the PVA glue I used, I've watered down a little bit. This one, I just put it on real gluggy, no, no water added, so that's probably also why. So nowhere near as warped and bubbly but i still did go over it with an iron and it's absolutely beautiful i can definitely see a difference this is the pva glue one and you can i don't know if you can see it in the video but there's warping in there i can feel that under my hand even though i did go over it with an iron with this one here look at that it's just perfect and that's glued on like if i try you see if i try to feel that it's it's really glued on. I, I cannot get that off. So those are the seven methods I've tried. Glad wrap, double-sided tape, freezer paper, PVA glue, heat and bond, fusible interfacing, and fabric glue. Please let me know if you want me to do a specific video on any of these methods. And of course, also let me know if there are other ways that you have tried that work really well for you. Okay, now, Please allow me to demonstrate how to apply and use your book cloth. This is just to give you some inspiration and perhaps guidance. First thing I want to do is cover the spine of this book. And I'm opting to use my double-sided tape book cloth. And I'm thinking I want some zigzag edges. So now this double-sided tape is quite sticky. And what I'm going to do, just to make this process a little bit easier, is just like I did in my previous video when I was using contact paper to make crafts, instead of peeling off the whole backing, I'm going to only peel off a little bit so that I'm not working with this large sticky surface. And now I can make sure that I have this where I want it, somewhere in the middle, align that, make sure it's nice and straight, glue that down. And now maybe gradually start peeling this off and I really want to get into that groove that groove there and the groove on this side so I have my bone folder ready and I am going to use that to make sure that everything is where I want it to be keep peeling off slowly and now my next groove get in there perfect and slowly unpeel the whole thing and there we have it how easy is that nice and perfect and in those grooves and that's looking good now i'm going to turn this over get rid of these pages so all that i have is that cover the back cover and the front cover here i might actually leave all of that in there and now i'm going to fold this in get it into the grooves and then the top i'll just flip it around and done that looks really neat really beautiful i can leave it as it is and what i would do from here uh, add a book plate or perhaps what i did on this one here just cover the panels up and then add a book plate or something like that you know there's many different things we can do maybe i can just play around in any case on the inside what i would do here is maybe first reinforce the spine i mean there's many different ways of going about this but this is what i would do 
I have just a piece of cardboard that I cut down to fit within the spine and make sure that the book can still close easily. I'm going to go ahead and cover this in fabric. You can use the book cloth you have already prepared. I probably overcomplicated this process, but the idea is that we have a spine reinforcement here. Next thing I wanna do is maybe add some side panels here, but then what's going to happen is this white will be showing through. That's very easy to fix. You can paint, you can add a little bit of washi tape, you can add some fabric, you can add another piece of book cloth and do it this way, just like I said before, many different ways of going about this. On this one here, I just used another piece of book cloth. For this one, I'm just gonna add washi tape. Might add just a little bit of glue in those grooves. That's looking quite nice from the top. Next, the side panels. I'm gonna take it to my machine and just sew around with red thread. And here we go, I've sewn all the way around. This is just for aesthetic purposes, nothing more. And now I'm going to glue this down. And there we have it done, nice and neat and perfectly beautiful. The reason why I showed you this is I wanted you to see how I go about this. Another way that you can do this, like I said before, there's many ways. You can have your piece of book cloth much larger so that when it wraps around your spine at the back or at the front here, if it's a much longer piece, you can wrap it to the inside, so then you don't have to worry about all these bits and pieces. But I like to reinforce my spine, which is why I went this way. Okay, next thing I want to do is show you how to cover the whole book. I'm working with this small one because I have it and, I'm, and I want to cover it because you can see the spine, there's writing on there, there's writing on the front and the back, and I want to cover the whole thing. So I'm going to use this book cloth that I made using the heat and bond. And I'm just going to trim it down to size. All right, my book cloth is ready to go, cut down to size. You can see slightly larger or about an inch larger than my full book. And now I'm going to apply glue on the spine and into the grooves. And I don't have to worry about the glue seeping through, but I still like to just have an even layer of glue. Pop this down, turn it around and work it into the grooves. And now apply glue all over the side panels. Okay, pop that down, work it in, make sure it's nicely glued down. Do the other side and pop that down. And now turn it around. And now you can see this puckering here. We want to leave that. You don't want to flatten anything out because we want that book cloth to be adhered to the groove on the outside. So what I'm going to do here, if you just kind of flip this on the inside, that might mess around with the grooves. It would still work, but I like to cut this into a little point here on both sides. See that there? And then glue this down and do the same thing on this side. That's pretty good, but I'm going to just hold it in place with these little clips just for now. Next, I'm going to do the corners. So I'm just going to apply glue to all of the corners, might as well, all at once, and start wrapping because I really want nice edges, nice corners, I should say. Next, I'm gonna fold these sides to the inside. I have to say that I'm finding this heat and bond cloth be a little bit difficult to work with because it's quite thick. I think it would be better if I use the thinner paper but I'm gonna make it work, I hope. Just applying glue all over the place. There we go, very, very thick. So I don't know, we'll see, is this going to be a fail? We shall see. I like having challenges like this because I have to come up with solutions then. That's what I tell myself anyway. Ideally, it would be better not to have challenges like this. It would be better to have just a very easy flowing little project, but it's good to show you kind of what can happen, I suppose, and also what to do about it. When I was making this cover here, I didn't have the issue I'm having at the moment, and this is freezer paper, so 
it seems to be a little bit thinner than the heat and bond. All right, now we're left with these sides. So if I just pop this down, you can see this extra piece of fabric here. I wonder if I need to cut that into a point or if I can just leave it. If I leave it, there will be a whole lot of puckering here. So I'm going to get rid of this excess. I don't know how well you can see that, but I just cut that into a little point and now I'm going to glue this down. All right, that's down and repeat the same process on these three sides. All right, ideally I would allow this to dry before continuing, but because I'm filming the video, I'm just going to continue even though this isn't dry. So that's how it's looking so far and it looks good on the outside, beautiful. This probably should have been my front cover, can still be. All right, so now we need to cover the inside. At this point, you could just go ahead and cover the whole inside with an, another piece of the same fabric or book cloth, but this isn't actually large enough. So I'm only going to cover the spine. So here's my little piece ready to go. I'm going to apply glue all over the thing. I don't have to worry about anything seeping through. Pop this down and use my bone folder to get into the groove. Perfect. All right, that's looking good. And now cover this. I'm going to apply some side panels exactly the same way as I did in the previous one. And there we have it done. Beautiful little journal cover. I need to lay this under something heavy now to make sure that everything is glued down properly. This was quite challenging to work with, this heat and bond one. I don't know if it's the fabric that's quite thick or the paper that I used to uh, back it with but I did find this process much harder than when I was doing this one which is the freezer paper one. I'm not sure what that's all about. Could also be the size of the book. Quite a small book. Might have been easier to work with a large piece. I'm not sure. All right this is going to go under something heavy but you can see how beautiful that looks. That book cloth absolutely stunning. Nice and flat no air bubbles, no glue seeping through, absolute perfection. So in conclusion, these are my findings. I think the interfacing one is the best to use for covering books, large books like this, when you wanna cover the whole book, because it is the most pliable and easiest to work with. When you want to cover just the spines like these here, I would go with the double-sided tape or the interfacing or the PVA glue one. Actually, I think the PVA glue one with the paper, I would reserve for making things like this, pouches, envelopes, that sort of stuff, fun stuff that we can add to junk journals and fill up with lots of goodies. I would also use this as perhaps the first page in a journal. I think that would look really nice. The glad wrap one, I think would go really with anything. You can use it for covering the whole book or just the spine or just the inside. I think it will work either way. Same with the freezer paper one. I would use that in all the projects, including the fussy cutting out and the spines and the insides and the book pages and the pouches, all of that with the freezer paper. But do keep in mind that the freezer paper one peels off very, very easily. So if you're going to use it as a book page or a pouch or whatnot, you would have to make sure that you sew all the edges, including this one here, which this one here I didn't sew because this is PVA glue one. And the main problem with the PVA glue wasn't the adhesion, it was more the air bubbles and the warping and the wrinkling, which ironing seemed to have helped. So I think the more experimentation you do, the more ideas come, you come up with, and then you see what works best for you and which book cloth works best for your project that you're making. The fabric glue one I haven't used yet. The adhesion is very, very good. It's very, it's stuck on there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, the only thing is the process of applying the fabric glue, it takes quite a long time. It took quite a long time for this one little narrow piece. And if I wanted to cover a whole book, perhaps a larger book like this, it would take way too long. So I just wouldn't bother with the fabric glue one. And the winner is, I think they all win for different purposes. I don't think any of them were complete fails. I Probably the only one is this one. This type of a freezer paper, this large one, it just barely, barely any adhesion there. So this is probably good if you just wanna keep it in place or cutting it for drawing on the fabric, cutting it out. I don't know, there's plenty of videos on using freezer paper for uh, printing stuff out and stuff like that. I have plenty of book cloth left over so that I can keep experimenting and using it in different ways, which I'll keep sharing with you. I have some projects here I need to finish 
get some signatures behind the men finish the front covers i love the look of these beautiful quilting fabrics on my journals and another thing i don't know if i mentioned for this type of a project you need thin fabric thick fabric like this for example this is upholstery fabric i mean you can still do it but it's not going to work for book covering for book covering obviously you need thin fabric and thin paper if you want to make other projects like this then of course you can use upholstery fabric as well i think the key is experimentation all right thank you so much for watching please let me know if you have any questions any comments pop them down below any ideas any other things that you have tried let us know and again thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye